Over the past few years, more and more companies have started making affordable and compact anamorphic lenses for cinema cameras and mirrorless cameras. Great Joy Optical Technology is still a rather unknown brand that focuses on making different types of anamorphic lenses. The 50mm T2.9 is a compact full-frame cinema lens with a squeeze ratio of 1.8x. Even though it's a 50mm lens, the distortion turns it into a 28mm lens. Even though the field of view is tighter, the anamorphic characteristics are still very visible. The oval bokeh balls are especially noticeable when shooting wide open at T2.9, but depending on the composition can still be seen at T8. How strong and clean the bokeh balls are depends on the brightness intensity. Another typical characteristic is the lens flare that has different elements. Hard to ignore is the blue streak that goes across the image and is especially noticeable when panning. The flares aren't prominent in every shooting scenario unless when filming directly into a light source. The squeeze ratio of 1.8 times makes the anamorphic characteristics much more visible and enjoyable, especially if the foreground and background are out of focus. The bokeh distortion really makes a difference and is even noticeable on smaller sensor cameras. It's hard to really judge the image quality of this lens since the anamorphic look is a rather imperfect attribute in general. Things like distortion and sharpness cannot be judged the same way as spherical lenses being rated. Overall, you must be a fan of this type of organic look to fully appreciate it. I highly recommend using an external monitor that has a squeeze feature to correctly display the aspect ratio while filming. Without a larger external screen, it can be quite challenging to judge the focus properly even when using focus peaking. I actually messed up quite a few shots when I was first testing the lens because I didn't use a dedicated screen. While the lens looks like a massive piece of gear on a medium-sized mirrorless camera, it's actually not that big. It weighs around 1 kilo, which is rather lightweight for anamorphic glass. The housing is made from metal and the lens feels well built all in all. The focus ring is truly meant to be used with a follow focus, this means it will take a second or two to pull focus from the minimum focusing distance of 0.7 meters to infinity. This is great to be able to get precise and slow shifts between subjects. On the side are the marks to see the distance in meters. When turning the focus ring there is a slight noise but nothing distracting, but when hitting the end quickly a metal click sound is audible. The aperture ring is behind the focus ring and has more friction, which I personally prefer. It's possible to turn the ring smoothly from T2.9 all the way to T22 in a one-hand movement. But since it also has gear rings, the T-stop can be adjusted remotely if needed. On the bottom between the two rings is a lens support adapter to be able to balance the weight correctly. This is essential to have to avoid damaging the camera and of course to avoid throwing off the balance of the rig completely. Since we didn't have the dedicated accessories, we used a different type of lens support to ensure the safety of the setup. The lens front has an 82mm filter thread to be able to mount circular filters, for example diffusion or neutral density, which not everyone needs, but I personally preferred over square filters that require a special mount or a mat box. Mm -hmm. 
The Greyjoy 50mm T2.9 is a good addition to a growing market of compact anamorphic lenses. This lens is certainly not cheap, but let's not forget most anamorphic full-frame glass costs 3 to 10 times the price, so this actually is a solid piece of gear considering the price. The 1.8 squeeze ratio really makes a difference, not just on full-frame cameras, and that also means you can still get that remarkable filmic look when closing the T-stop to 5.6 or 8.